Well, hello. So, next day. Oh. Um. Uh, yeah, this is probably be. It's gonna be the image. <clears throat> so I did some uh, stuff uh, off screen because it's not very interesting to see. I said I would uh, use epoxy, but uh, instead I used tape for a change. And the reason is it's fast, that's one of the reasons, but the second reason is that because of this method of uh, making this spacer, it actually uh, can take up force in both directions. So it could be that using tape might be enough to hold everything in place. Still not sure, but time will tell. Uh, I can always glue it if I want, but it's not it's not nice to mix epoxy and um, fiddle around with it. So what did I do? Um, I got glue on the metal frame already. I got glue on the magnets we're gonna use. I cut them to length already. Uh, so it's actually putting them in by hand, not with a jig this time. There's one thing I need a knife, and the reason is. Um, I put glue on these magnets and um, I have to slit them apart because otherwise I will pull the, the glue off. Not very nice. So I kind of have to. That's better this time, that's the last time I'm trying. So I slit the knife in between the magnets. To break them loose without uh, destroying the glue on, on the magnets. I think these are pretty much no, they're not loose either. <laughs> uh, this, in this um, project, I use uh, recycled magnets, as you can see, maybe because they look uh, a little bit uglier than the, the ones I used earlier. Hmm. Uh, these are uh, magnets from SMGA MagnaPen. I had these panels, uh, they were uh, screwed up eight years ago or something and I, I moved them from house to house because I still wanted to do something with them. So they're around for like a pretty long time just standing in uh, with all my crap, my hobby crap. And uh, now's the time to uh, use them. Although I, I did use them earlier a little bit. I made the, this sort of poor man's magnet pen. Post once up at the audio to how to make a small simple tweeter with a rubber magnet. But after that, I they were just standing there. Standing there and I got the hiccup, hickey. But no, hickey something else. Okay, so um, we're gonna do this manually, and um, I turn this around because this is the. This it's gonna stand like this, and uh, so we have to put in the magnets like this. So and as to the drawing, we start off with um, the tweeter magnets. And the first one is easy, of course, because we're just going to drop it in, just like that. There isn't much spacing between uh, the magnet and the... Um, you can see a tiny, 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 tiny spacing. It's not much. I hope it's going to be okay, but we'll see. Now we're going to use the tool, or tool. Can, well, this is not a tool, it's just a piece of plastic, but uh, in this case it's two millimeters uh, thick and that was the spacing I was going to use in this, uh, in between the magnets, so just drop this one in, like this, it would be nice if it would stand a little bit, yeah, something like this, and we're going to grab the next magnet that will attract to the first one and just ram it in. Just push it a little bit, push it down and remove the piece of plastic. That's it. Just be sure that there's not no crap on the magnets. Because otherwise they will be higher and it might screw up uh, the end result. So far so good. We needed five pieces of this small magnet. Yep, 
you can see it's not as as accurate as uh, as with the jig <coughs> that's the reason why I left some extra space here just in case because I'm pretty sure it's not always two oh, two millimeters sometimes it might be a little bit more than that I do hope I left enough space because it would be really really bad if I would left one magnet out that's not gonna work I have to leave out two magnets then so that's the first part as you can see it's quite a nice amount of open area because I choose, chose uh, two millimeter spacing that's quite big so now on to the bigger magnets but this is where the first base wire is going to travel. It's going to use one of the tweeter magnets and one of these wider magnets. So they have to be... You see that this one is attracted on the top of it to the other magnet, so this is the wrong start. I'm going to put this aside. So this is the one we should start with, I guess. Yes, it doesn't want to be on the magnet, but it wants to be to the side of it. That's exactly what we want. So just gonna drop it in here. And we need 16 of those, so I'm just gonna do this and gonna speed it up probably. Yeah, I said 16, but uh, I, I checked it out and it's uh, 19. 19, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, go. So it's actually going to be tight fit. Rather tight fit. It is not going to fit. So, I checked it up and uh, actually uh, my worst nightmare, uh, well it's not my worst nightmare, <laughs> but uh, although I left some extra space, it's uh, still not enough and this is this is because I do it by hand and every every time here, it's not exactly two millimeters, so every time you you will shift a little bit more this to this side. So. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why do making a jig might be nice because <clears throat> you put it in the jig and you see already if it's not gonna fit because well it is gonna fit because uh, the spacing's well it's it's just the way how I should make it by hand sucks apparently make with a jig you just design the jig and it's correct this is crappy you see. So I'm gonna drop out two of these big ones, since I can fit one more, but then the wire uh, would not return to this uh, side, it, it would be ending here, which is is not useful, so I'm gonna lose two of these. So that's a total of two windings, but that's okay, because the mid-range base uh, part was, I think, I calculated 6 point something ohm so losing this will make it a little uh, lower in resistance but that's okay I mean lower the resistance the more power it will uh, get 
I'm okay with that. So, now we just have to find the right, yes, this one. So we're gonna make the tweeter part now. This I have to re-glue because I need the, um, the 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 direction of the magnetic field is the wrong way around. So I have to remove the glue and put some new glue on. So, some glue on there. I'm gonna use the heat gun because uh, I'm not like waiting. <laughs> Okay, so our last part goes in. So I did have to, have to alter the design a bit, which is a shame. But uh, that's the way it is. Uh, I mean, at least I got an even number of turns here, so all wires will end up here. That's good. And the tweeter part is, uh, well, exactly as it should be, so there is no problem. It's only the base part that's losing two of these magnets. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is, and uh, it will be okay. So next step will be using mylar, putting mylar on. And this time I'm going to use tape as well, even for a test. I mean, I'm not going to get as much tension on this one as I did with the bigger panels so it might hold which would save me a lot of um, fiddling around with the NF30 because uh, it you know well everything gets uh, quite messy tape would be nicer if it works usually long term for big electrostatic speakers and such it doesn't work so but for this small panel it might so I'm just gonna try it if it does, it saves me time. If it doesn't, it costs me time. <coughs> Just a gamble. Next thing, mylar. Well, so, I made a... Uh, I didn't make anything. I uh, <coughs> put some uh, double-sided tape on the panel and I cleaned it. Uh, here is a piece of 12 micron mylar on a glass plate. I used uh, this cutter to cut it. It's really nice to not use a normal blade for foils because it's not working. Okay, look. You can just snip off a tiny piece without tearing it and such. So these are really nice to have. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna use the jig this time. I'm just gonna tape it down. And I'll use some uh, Nichiban gaffer tape in this case because it you can easily tear it by hand and use it instead uh, of fucking around. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tape this side first to the table. And now I use one of these on the opposite side to stretch it. It's gonna look dirty. As you see, all wrinkled up and such. But this is the way I'm gonna do it. Now I'm gonna do it slightly in corners. There's a method of how to do it, which I can't recall. <laughs> so I'm gonna use it like this for now. When these tapes are in, you can always adjust them quite easily because this tape, uh, you can get, get it off quite easy. See? Just adjust this one a little bit. So now I'm gonna tension this side first, then do this. Oh, 
broke my light. Wait. It's quite sunny outside, so... Ooh, look at my light being gone. Well, that's it for now, uh, light-wise. Can't control the sun. And, uh... I don't have a light here, so... <clears throat> now we're gonna do this side. Put it on tension. Yeah, that's a weird uh, shot. Because then, of course, my camera died. Or it didn't die, it, it ran, it was full or something, and it corrupted the file all over the place. So, even working with the, this, the video I got was uh, is terrible, it takes ages. But I noticed the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the adhering of the panel uh, was not on it, so that sucked. But what I did was uh, I removed the, the yellow backing stuff and just dropped it in place and cut it free. And this is the result. Um, one thing to notice is you have to go with your thumb all around the perimeter to um, adhere it well to the, to the tape. And now it's, it's rather good so far. It uh, is uh, nice and flat. Um, yeah, it sounds. It sounds good. So, end result. Next step will be uh, the wiring, which is um, quite a lot of work because we use so many turns. But uh, well, after that, you can at least listen to it. So that's the best part. If you're done with this annoying job, then the fun starts. So. That's the next video, gonna rewire or wire this uh, paddle with um, a few different wires. And uh, well, see you next time. And hopefully, there's more light. And my iPhone is not screwing me over and corrupt everything I do. Might need a new camera. No monies. See you next time.